My name is Falco Bussi. I'm a vice president at Philips Healthcare and I'm responsible for all MR um, guided therapies. That includes MR HIFU, but also has other applications like MR LINAC and radiation therapy planning in MR and so on. I see currently the Asian markets as leading in adoption and also setting the pace in adoption. And there's of course multiple reasons for it. Um, it has not so much to do with regulatory hurdles, um, because for example in Europe we also have regulatory approval for the technology, but it has to do with the healthcare system, um, where you have a relatively low level of health insurance in these, in these economies. So um, patients are used to pay for therapies out of pocket, they inform themselves. Um, and so you have a, a whole group of entrepreneurial radiologists who drive these new technologies because they see a business and of course they see a value for the patient. And that happens mainly in Asia. It's an interesting thing because in the US still the regulatory approval is a major hurdle, both in terms of time but also in terms of investment. Every approval, every indication in the US takes several years and many million dollars to get it done. So for every indication, um, we have to make an economic assessment as a company if this is a valuable investment, yes or no. Europe, the regulatory hurdle is different. It's, um, it's much shorter, um, but still you have, um, you have challenges with adoption uh, because of the uh, reimbursement structure. The U.S. can still be a very large market, but the U.S. is very much driven by financial incentives. Um, so even if you have regulatory approval, if reimbursement is not in place, it will still not fly. So you have actually both reimbursement and regulatory approval. We have around uh, 50 installations, um, and the, the number is growing now relatively strongly. Um, but as I said, we are at this tipping point, so right now we nicely address these early adopters. Um, but if we really want to continue the growth, we also need to be able to get consensus adopters convinced. And only then we can, um, can continue to grow. Otherwise, we will mature at a certain point in time. The Eugen Fibre application is approved in Europe, in most of Asia, in Middle East and South America. Um, we will have approval in Canada very soon, um, not yet in the United States. In the United States, we have approval for the pivotal trial, and the trial is going to start any time now. Um, we also have approval CE marking for the treatment of bone metastasis, which is a palliative application, um, which again covers Europe, um, most of Asia, um, Middle East, and, and South America. We have um, prototype devices um, for the treatment of breast cancer. Um, there's one device installed right now. Um, we have other prototype devices for the treatment of prostate cancer and liver um, cancers, which is both primary liver cancer and liver metastases. So these are some of the key applications we are going to pursue in the near future. So I see MR HIFU at the tipping point right now. So as far as adoption is concerned, um, I think we have now two um, strong players on the market. We have good products. We have many thousand successful treatments, um, almost no serious side effects and good outcomes. But um, we, are, we still do not have um, strong momentum in many um, markets in many countries. Although we have regulatory approval, but we don't see the momentum yet. We see it building up in some markets, especially in Asia. Um, and when I talk about momentum, what I mean is that the um, technology as such is broadly known to radiologists and also referring physicians. It's embedded in the clinical workflow, which means people are, um, they regard MR HIFU as a valid treatment option, and it's embedded in their guidelines. And that the um, physicians um, actually have a business model that allows them to um, make a commercial operation out of it. That's what I mean with momentum. We only see that in very few markets right now in Asia. And I'm concerned that if we are not able to bring that to a larger number of really important markets, then we might have um, MR HIFU be a niche application for some time to come. So this is the tipping point. And uh, the adoption we can only drive when we have these kind of 
um, parameters established in specific markets. I truly believe that the period of time we have is even less than five years. If you want to be successful and you want your sales team to be motivated to sell, you need to have success in the marketplace. If you're not successful there within a couple of years, then also the sales team will lose the motivation to sell. There's another application which I didn't mention so far, which is not a single clinical application, but more a technology-based application, which is focal drug delivery. Uh, this is something which is in principle applicable to a large variety of cancers, starting from breast cancer, liver, uh, bone tumors, um, even to pancreatic cancer, where you have not even an, um, a, an option for ablation. Um, so there, there we um, partner with um, pharma companies that develop these kind of therapeutics. Um, and then we use the focus ultrasound to just heat up the tumor um, some degrees and then the, the drug is released uh, locally. So that is an interesting area for, um, as a general technology area for future applications. I think there's a, a good potential that in the future also um, oncology departments will actually operate uh, the machine, which is a change, it's a paradigm shift because then they also need to operate the MR machine, which is not standard practice today. And there's a large thing around it because um, we then need to offer also other solutions around the uh, MR oncology space, for example, radiation therapy planning on the MR, um, just to name an example.